Plains. This beautiful speed plant risen out of the Texas Plains west of Fort Worth, and every year we've come there's been something new, especially a new track configuration. Since we were here last year for the Winston Cup race, turn four's exit has been widened, as has the entrance to turn number one. Something else is new, the weather. They practiced and qualified in sun and heat, and today it is overcast and cloudy. So I'll turn to our CBS race strategist, Ned Jarrett. Ned here, everything in Texas that's new, it's new all over again. Yes, it is, Mike, and I'll tell you, it's going to be a challenge for the drivers and the teams knowing how to adjust the car during the day. They had to do a lot of guesswork because they did miss that happy hour yesterday afternoon because of the weather and it rained hard, washed all the rubber off the racetrack and so a setup that they might have had in practice yesterday morning might not work so good in the beginning of this race here today. So it is going to be a challenge for both the drivers and the crew members. All right, Buddy Baker, put your helmet on and tell us this starts out as a one groove racetrack. It is so fast, but to pass, you're gonna need a second groove you're going to have to have one, but you're going to have to wait a while because it'll dictate as you start by lap traffic, you will have to move up in that second lane to get by slower traffic. But right now, it's treacherous out there. The racetrack was washed down last night. There is no outside groove, and the fast way around the racetrack, as you said, right around the white line. They'll have to be careful right at first. Ned, Kenny Irwin's pole speed was five miles an hour faster than last year. The cars aren't that much faster. The track is. Yes, they renovated turn four and turn one and the banking coming off of turn four does not give them the upset of the race car the way that it did last year and as a result they're carrying much more speed into turn one than they did before and it has made a little bit of a problem in turn two because that turn is very sharp and they got more speed than they've ever had there before so that's going to be a challenge for them too in practice turn two has been calamity corner here the field begins to assemble to roll off. They took a little extra minute on the grid there to warm things up on this very cool day. And now 43 cars pull off pit road to form up behind the Chevrolet safety car. We're set for the third year to go Winston Cup Racing in Texas live on CBS. We'll be right back with the starting lineup. CBS Sports coverage of the Texas 500 is sponsored by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Top. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Welcome back to CBS Sports coverage of the Texas 500. Here's the starting lineup. Kenny Irwin, second career pull with a new track record. Bobby Labonte, third place point man. They share the front row. Steve Park, his best start ever, and Terry Labonte. Ward Burton, runner-up at Las Vegas, and Mark Martin, defending winner of this race. Kenny Schrader, and two-time winner this season already, Jeff Gordon. Bill Elliott, former Winston Cup champion, and Wally Donovan, former Trans Am champ. Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett, runner-up at Rockingham. Elliott Sadler, the rookie, and former Bush champion, Randy LaJoy. John Andretti and Robert Presley up in the eighth row. Brett Bodine and Rick Mast in row nine. Tony Stewart, the rookie and two-time winner this year, Jeff Burton. Jerry Nadu and Ernie Irvin in row 11. Mike Skinner, former point leader, now fifth, and Johnny Benson. Ted Musgrave and fastest second round qualifier, Jeff Bodine. Jeremy Mayfield, second in Darlington, and Joe Nemechek. Michael Waltrip and Rich Bickle. Row 16, Buckshot Jones and Darrell Waltrip times into the field. Bobby Hamilton and Ricky Rudd in row 17. Ricky Craven and Derek Cope. Then it's Chad Little and Dale Earnhardt on a provisional start today, as is Sterling Marlin and Kevin LePage. Jimmy Spencer and Kenny Wallace. And David Green takes the final provisional spot in the field. And Mike, they're on their last lap before they get the green coming around. There were just five drivers who did not make the field here for the Texas 500. Stanton Barrett, Ken Bouchard, Dave Marcus, Kyle Petty, and Dick Trickle. And Bouchard has been released from Parkland Hospital after that qualifying crash gave him a concussion. He's okay. In today's field, you have 21 Fords, 14 Chevrolets, and 8 Pontiacs. Last pace lap, and we'll get set to go green under cloudy skies. Just real cool compared to practice and qualifying days, Ned. Yes, it is. 58 degrees. Of course, the humidity pretty high here today. A little bit of wind, and of course, it is overcast. 
and all of that can play into the setup of the race cars. You can see them going back and forth there, getting a little heat into the tires. That's Kenny Irwin, the pole sitter of the Texaco Haviland Cam. Jeff Gordon, the Winston Cup champion, the DuPont camera in his car. Bill Elliott, the Super 8 Motels camera, and Wally Dolan back with the Budweiser cam in his Chevy. From Bill Elliott, here's Dolan back, starting in 10th position. Dale Jarrett, the Ford Quality Care, Ford Credit Camera, and Robert Presley, the Jasper Engines and Transmissions, 77. And you'll ride with Tony Stewart, top rookie on the tour, the Home Depot camera from Joe Gibbs Racing. Pace car pulls in, Texas Governor George W. Bush on the flag stand, waves the green flag. We'll be right back to Texas, but now this CBS News special report. We're under the green flag at Texas. Five laps complete. Kenny Irwin, the pole sitter, has led them all from Terry Labonte, but Jeff Gordon and Jeff Bodine are the drivers that have been moving up. Yes, and, and Terry Labonte in the five there. He looked like he was going to move right up into the lead there, right on the first lap. He's running very very strong today. It didn't take them long to get into single file, as we heard many of the drivers say before the race started. For a little while, it'll be a one-group racetrack, and that is right on the bottom of the racetrack. You see Gordon there now, running right down on the bottom. He is running in the fourth position. Behind Kenny Irwin, Terry Labonte, and Ward Burton, the older of the two brothers, and that number 22 Pontiac, middle of your screen. Tight pack. This is for the lead. Six laps into the Texas 500, all run under green. Irwin takes them across the stripe as Jeff Gordon, that bright orange colored car, looks for third place down in turn one. You're exactly right. He moved to the inside, just going down towards turn one and thought better of it, dropped back into single file through the corner. Was hard to get more to the inside than more Gordon was. <laughs> well, right now, it's very important to the guys that are running for the national championship to lead a lap and get that five bonus points for leading a lap here. So Gordon wants to take the lead if he possibly can. Sixth race of the NASCAR season here in Texas. Let's go to Pit Road, Ralph Shaheen. Line to green number 18 of Bobby Labonte has slipped back to fifth place. He has developed a push in that car, and they're going to try to get him to hang on as long as he can in that top five. Dick Bergen? The radio chatter is heavy, intense right now. The last practice session was washed out yesterday. The drivers did not have a chance to try the setups that are under many of these race cars. Mark Martin, very, very loose. The 21, Elliott Sadler, pushing very badly. It's all ends of the spectrum. Many of the cars are not yet right. They'll get them right before this race is over, but a lot of them aren't right now, Mike. Bobby Labonte's car just got right. He just slipped underneath the 24 of Jeff Gordon, and Labonte, who is nursing a, a Chip's shoulder has moved up to fourth place. Yeah, you know, he said he sneezed this morning and almost knocked himself out. It hurt so bad, but, you know, he ran in Darlington last week, waited till the first pit stop to come in, and that's a pretty good test to see whether you're going to make it or not. And he was set back there just for a second, but now he's going towards the front. Bill Stevens. I just spoke to Andy Graves, the crew chief for Terry Labonte. I said, what's Terry telling you about how the car is handling? He said, he hasn't said anything. I said, is that a good sign? He said, it's a very good sign. So far, so good. Jeff Burton, fellow that's won two of these races so far, started in 20th, finds himself drifting way back to 37th spot. He's the point standing leader, and that car is not working. Mike, he got caught on the outside in the early laps up on the high side of the racetrack, and just a, almost a train went by him down on the inside. So apparently his car is not feeling well, even though uh, he did get up on that outside for a good while. Watching the rear view of Kenny Irwin, Terry Labonte. In the two Texas appearances, he has a fourth and a sixth place finish. Battle here, Sterling Marlin. That's inside, Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip in 66. And Kevin LePage comes along in car number 16. Dale Earnhardt moves underneath Waltrip. And 
here comes Burton in 99, trying to gain back a position. Mike, what's happening right now is a lot of the cars, uh, the racetrack was cleaned off last night by a real hard rainstorm. And right now, if you have a push condition, it won't right itself. That'll break the front wheels loose and it'll try to go out towards the wall. And if you're loose, it'll also slide the back out real bad until they can adjust on the first pit stop. If you have a handling problem, <laughs> you just go have to ride it out. As you look at our scoring rundown in the upper left, note the drivers whose position number uh, have a green background have moved up a position the last lap. The drivers whose numbers show a red background have lost a position or more in the last lap. 13 laps, they've all been green so far here in Texas. Kenny Irwin's Ford leads the Chevrolet of Terry Lavati and the Pontiac of Ward Burton. We'll be right back to Texas. Eighteen laps complete here in Texas with a fresh view of Texas Motor Speedway, the Bud One Airship, reminding you fresh beer tastes better. Eighteen laps complete. Kenny Irwin has led them all. And Mike, we're off to a much better start here today in this Texas 500 than ever before. In the first two, they wrecked on the first lap in the first turn, but we've gone 18 laps and no mishaps. And you can see right there, I thought we was going to have to interrupt and say trouble on the back straightaway. Terry Labonte almost collected our leader, Kenny Irwin Jr., coming out of turn two. Kenny got to pushing a little bit, and he almost ran in the back of it. They had a couple of inches, buddy. Yeah. Between those cars. <laughs> At 200 miles an hour, a couple of inches sometimes. Don't get the job done. Terry is a very patient race driver, but I believe his car right now might be a little bit faster than Kenny Irwin's, but he hadn't found a way to move around it. Now, here he's on the throttle. You can hear them both on the throttle. And right in the center of the corner, you saw the body close right to the bumper. But that Robert Yates horsepower takes over down the back straightaway. And here's Labonte coming into the corner, coming right back up on Irwin. Now, what happened there was the five car of Terry Labonte pushed out just a little bit. And away went the uh, leader, Kenny Irwin. You know, Hendrick has uh, three cars in the race right now. They're running second, fifth, and sixth. Pretty good showing or one stable. And that third place car of Ward Burton, third car from the left on your screen, that is the team that has done the best among the single car teams. Uh, in the five races so far this season, Burton has three top ten finishes, a second and two eighths. Now here are two of the Hendrick cars. As mentioned, right there, 24 Jeff Gordon and 25 Wally Dollenbach, who is looking for his first top ten finish of the season today. And, of course, that other Henry car is Terry Labonte up there running in second place. Just looking at Wally Dollenbach's car in the corner, he is actually able to run a little bit lower than Jeff Gordon, so he's really hooked up, and I know he's got to be proud of the way the car is working right now. No practice late yesterday afternoon. Everybody had to go to their notebooks and, and their best guess as to how to set up and choose springs, shock absorbers, sway bars, and suspensions. Check with Ken Squire. And that will demand a caution at lap 34, 51 miles into the event. NASCAR is planning, as we understand, to bring the cars down on pit road, give these mechanics a chance at them for just a moment here, since they really didn't have an opportunity to work on a setup yesterday. Happy hour being eliminated for the third straight year. Kenny Irwin continues to lead. Again, here's Mike Joy. But Ken, that's more in the interest of safety than it is the competition because of the lack of extended practice. NASCAR wants to give the teams a chance to look at tire wear uh, and have this uh, early pit stop unless there is a caution flag incident prior uh, to lap 34, about 10 laps from now. Well, they also want to put on a great race here for the, this huge crowd they have today. And uh, the way to do that is let them adjust on these cars and make the necessary changes to them. Absolutely a good idea. I sent word down to Rocket Man to see if I could borrow that rig to escape <laughs> out of here, and Dick Bergeron has beaten me to it. There are over 200,000 fans jammed into here, and they had a huge crowd for the Bush Grand National Race yesterday. One by Mark Martin. Rain short, but Martin picking up the victory over his teammate, Jeff Burton. Terry Labonte had a, had a run coming off of turn four. Thought maybe he might be able to pull up beside Irwin, but he couldn't quite do it. Irwin keeping that car right down on the bottom line. And that's what he needs to do if he's going to hang on to the lead. But 
Labonte has another run coming off at two, but he won't be able to make the pass this time. Now, at this point in the race, if you could pass him to the outside, buddy, would you? No, you better not try that right now because you can see the dark part of the racetrack through the corner there. That is the groove. Up uh, above that, there's a lot of rubber buildup and dust up there because nobody's running up there right now. But Terry Labonte right now is trying to run extremely close to the 28 car, Kenny Irwin. Maybe get him a little bit loose coming up out of the corner. Take a little of the down pressure off the back of that car and make him a little bit where he slides a little off the corner and maybe get up the side of him going down the straightaway. If he does that, he can get right by him. 